Hey everybody, it's Mike with Inflatable Border, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Isle Pioneer 3. The Isle Pioneer 3 is a lightweight cruiser paddleboard built with versatility in mind. The full length deck pad and Isle Link system allow you to customize the board however you like and can quickly transform into a capable sit on top kayak as well. The new Isle Pioneer 3 boasts upgraded construction and a new kit of accessories, and it still has the same ultra stable, beginner friendly shape that the Pioneer series is known for. Isle's third generation Pioneer uses a lot of the same materials and construction methods that Isle debuted last year with their new Pro Series paddleboards. Inside the Pioneer 3, we have an updated drop stitch core that uses a woven fabric base layer and a low density drop stitch pattern that keeps the board flat, rigid, and lightweight. The outer shell of the board is primarily made with a single layer fusion PVC shell. And while single layer constructions were typically considered to be fairly negative for paddle boards five plus years ago, with new materials and new construction methods, that's not really the case anymore. And we've seen over the last few years, several very high quality paddle boards come to market that use a new single layer fusion material like the Pioneer 3. The fusion process uses machine lamination at the raw materials stage to reduce the amount of glue that's used and also to reduce any manufacturing errors that come about in a hand lamination process. This has the added benefit of also making the board lighter weight and more rigid. To join the top and bottom of the board together, Isle is using their power fuse welding construction method that they started using in the Pro Series paddle boards last year to turn the board into essentially one continuous piece of material that uses physical bonding rather than a chemical bonding process used with glues. Before adding the final outer rail band, Isle has added four PVC stringers on the top and bottom of the rails of the board that go through about two thirds of the length of the paddle board. These stringers are designed to provide additional support and rigidity without adding significant amounts of weight. At the end of the day, once all of the other features have been added to the Pioneer 3, it weighs in at just 19.6 pounds and has a maximum recommended inflation pressure of 17 PSI. Those welded internal rails also give the board more longevity, and to go with that, Isle has actually increased the warranty period of the Pioneer from two years with the Pioneer 2 to five years with the Pioneer 3 and its power fuse construction. And while the Pioneer 3 does share a lot of the same core materials and construction as Isle's Pro Series boards, what it doesn't have are the Infinity Fiber Stringers. So I was really interested to see how well this board would do in our bin test without that stringer system. With 170 pounds of weight on the board for our bin test, the Pioneer 3 did bin just over 1.8 inches. This is more than our current running average of about 1.6 inches. And while it's not nearly as rigid as the Pioneer Pro 10.6, the Pioneer 3 is also significantly lighter. And while the bin test is a great way for us to compare constructions between different boards and look at theoretical performance, what really matters is how the board feels on the water. And once I had the Pioneer 3 inflated and on the water, I felt that it had very good rigidity overall. While standing and paddling normally, there wasn't really any noticeable flex or bend in the board unless I was concentrating really hard to look for it. I did notice a little bit of flex while I was sprinting on the board. However, that's fairly normal for most inflatable paddle boards. While bouncing up and down on the board, I could produce a moderate amount of flex overall. However, when I stopped jumping, the Pioneer 3 did feel a little bit tight and springy as the board settled back down, which is not necessarily the best feeling. However, I didn't notice this at all anytime I was paddling the board normally. While the bin test results were a little bit lackluster, the actual board feel on the water was great. At 230 pounds, I felt very comfortable and would have no problem adding a child passenger or dog to come along with me as well. As a cruiser style paddleboard, the Pioneer 3 is a little bit wider and it's designed more for comfort. It's 10 and a half feet long. It measured 33 and a half inches wide and is six inches thick. It has a listed weight capacity of 285 pounds. And this is more of a recommended rider weight capacity rather than a total maximum weight capacity. The Pioneer 3 has an extra wide tail and a very broad nose. And that wider nose and tail allow for the main section of the board to stay mostly parallel and keeps the board at or near its 34 inch width throughout most of the standing area. It also increases the amount of surface area in contact with the water and reduces how easily the board can tilt from side to side. While out on the water, the Pioneer 3 felt incredibly stable for me. 
There was no rolling or twitching, and honestly, it felt easy to forget that I was even standing on the water. The Pioneer 3 stays very consistently stable as you move around on the board, and walking to the tail for a pivot turn is a breeze. The extra volume in the tail gives you plenty of support while turning, and the change in deck pad texture gives you additional traction as well. Overall, I'd say the Pioneer 3 has top tier stability performance, and it's a great option for beginner paddlers or larger paddlers who are worried about having a large enough board to keep them stable, for anglers, for sup yoga practitioners, uh, for paddling with a, a passenger or a dog, or really just anyone who wants a nice, comfortable, stable paddleboard. With its extra width and great stability, it may not come as a total surprise that the Isle Pioneer 3 is not the fastest paddleboard that we've ever tested. However, it is extremely efficient at cruising speeds. In our speed testing, we look at all sorts of different ways to paddle the board. And in our sustained sprint test, I was able to maintain an average of about 5.2 miles per hour. And I was able to reach a peak sprinting speed of just about 5.4 miles per hour. Now, these aren't incredibly high, but they are about average for cruiser-style paddleboards. There was some flex in the board while I was sprinting, however, I didn't feel like it was enough flex to really impact the overall speed performance of the board, and it didn't feel like it was pushing through the water like some more flexible paddleboards can. Now, while paddling at a more casual cruising pace that the Pioneer 3 is primarily designed for, I did find that it did very well, and it paddled an average of about 3.5 miles per hour while taking around 25 strokes per minute. Again, this is average to slightly high for a cruiser paddleboard. However, what really, really impressed me was its efficiency while paddling at this speed. While at this cruising speed, I could take a single stroke and the Pioneer 3 would continue to move for about 20 feet before I would notice it actually slowing down. And that gives it a gliding ratio of about 1.9 board lengths per stroke, which is something that we typically see more in a touring style paddleboard that's say around 30 inches and 12 feet long as opposed to 10 and a half by 34. Now what this really means is that as you're paddling the Pioneer 3, it feels extremely smooth. You don't get any jerky acceleration or deceleration as you're paddling at a cruising pace. And it just feels like a very comfortable experience, not like you're paddling a 34 inch plank through the water. That also means that you're gonna be able to paddle longer and for more time without feeling as much fatigue on your body. Cruiser subs like the Pioneer 3 are typically designed to be a little bit more maneuverable, and that's to kind of match their slower paced vibe. Having a more maneuverable paddleboard makes it easier to keep your group together while you're paddling, and it makes it easier to adjust your position on the water. So it wasn't really a surprise to me when the Pioneer 3 absolutely breezed through our maneuverability testing. In our forward sweep turning test, the Pioneer 3 needed just over five paddle strokes on average to make a complete 360 degree turn from a standstill. And while running the test in reverse using a reverse sweep stroke, the Pioneer 3 spun in just three and a half strokes on average. Steering the board was also very easy while paddling. I had no issue getting the board pointed in any direction that I wanted it to, and I could easily turn the board up to about 90 degrees or so while cruising with just one or two strokes. The flip side with a highly maneuverable cruiser sup is that it is typically a little harder to paddle it in a straight line. There's a lot of different things that a board designer can do to change how a paddleboard uh, can track straight or turn quickly, and the Pioneer 3 actually does a really good job of tracking considering its size and shape. So in our tracking test, we set a course for a distant target, and once we were moving in a straight line towards it, we took 10 paddle strokes on a single side and measured the difference between our new course at the end of that 10th paddle stroke and our original target. And we found that the Pioneer 3 actually did quite well, and on average was only deviating about 17 degrees off course. That is really good for a wider cruiser style paddleboard and is also fairly average for a typical all around style paddleboard. If you do plan on paddling longer distances more frequently, but you still want a very stable and comfortable board, then I would recommend looking at the new Isle Explorer 3 or the Explorer Pro 12 foot. For this new version of the Pioneer, Isle did remove the two small permanently fixed side bite fins that were found on the Pioneer 2, and they've moved to a single US fin box instead. Now, I actually think this is a positive improvement as those two side fins really don't do a whole lot except add drag in the water. And the US fin box itself is very flexible, both in terms of being able to swap out for a different fin, but also because you can actually fold the board a little bit tighter now thanks to its new split design. 
Overall, I think Isle did a fantastic job of balancing the high maneuverability that we expect to see in a cruiser SUP and also giving it very respectable tracking performance as well. At first glance, the Isle Pioneer 3 does look to be fairly minimalistic and bare bones. However, the more that you look at this paddleboard and the more time you spend with it, the more versatility and options you can actually find here. One of the Pioneer 3's most noticeable features is the new full-length deck pad. The new deck pad covers the entire length of the Pioneer 3 from nose to tail. The pad is an EVA foam that mostly has a soft brush texture, but it does change to a logo embossed texture at the tail of the board for increased traction as you move to the back. There are three carrying handles to make moving the Pioneer 3 easy, and there's a threaded accessory mount built into the handle on the nose of the board for cameras, GPS units, and other devices. There are two large cargo areas on the Pioneer 3 that are both removable and adjustable thanks to a very simple but effective cleat system built into the bungee cord. And you can move those cargo areas anywhere you like on the board thanks to the Pioneer 3's IO Link system. The IO Link system uses 19 pairs of polyethylene loops that are anchored into the stringer system of the board to provide you with an essentially limitless number of options for adjusting your cargo space and position, but also adding things like IO's kayak seat their foot brace, their fishing crate, and all sorts of other accessories, including their new shoulder carrying strap and their Isle Link straps. Now the Isle Link straps allow you to join two or more compatible Isle paddle boards to create a floating dock or raft up and paddle or float as you please. On the bottom of the board, we do have a D-ring underneath the nose for anchoring and towing. And at the tail, we have a split style US fin box for maximum fin compatibility and for easy storage. In addition to those onboard features, the Pioneer 3 also comes with a lightweight stretchable leash, a nine inch touring style fin with a toolless click fin adapter, a double action hand pump, a small dry bag that doubles as a leash and fin bag, and a small repair kit. All of this comes packaged in a new duffel style roller bag. This new bag has a stiffened bottom plate to help keep its shape for easy loading and a Velcro closure pocket for small items like keys and sunscreen. Lastly, Isle also includes their new carbon fiber nylon three-piece remix paddle. Altogether, this gives the Pioneer 3 a very versatile feature set, and it helps keep a nice clean and minimalist aesthetic for the board. Isle's three-piece remix paddle uses a carbon fiber shaft and carbon fiber handle section to help reduce the overall weight of the paddle and give it a sort of medium flex profile when you're using it in the water. The handle section uses a pin and clip adjustment mechanism to make it easy to set your length and to keep the handle aligned with the blade. On the back of the handle section, there is both a length scale and a height scale in inches and centimeters. And the grip itself is a comfortable palm grip shape with plenty of room for your fingers. It is made of plastic and it does have a textured checkerboard pattern on it. However, the plastic feels nice and solid in my hand rather than uh, soft or spongy. And the texturing is just light enough that it doesn't irritate your skin while you're paddling, but it does provide just a little bit of traction. Now, the main center section of the shaft is actually symmetrical. It has the same pin and clip adjustment uh, on each side, and that is how you attach the blade. Now, the big change for the blade for this uh, Pioneer 3 versus the Pioneer 2 is that instead of having a large, heavier plastic teardrop shaped blade, we now have this lighter weight uh, rectangular shaped blade. It does have a mild amount of scoop into it and just a little bit of rake angle uh, rather than having a larger rake angle and no scoop. Now this rectangular blade, I actually do prefer this to the teardrop shape. Uh, I feel like with this medium surface area, it's a little bit more comfortable for most paddlers. It's a little bit lighter feeling. It is actually physically lighter as well. And it still provides a moderate amount of flex in the water that you can get enough power with to easily move the board, but it's not so stiff that it makes your shoulders tired by the end of the day. Now, the pin and clip adjustment system here, there is actually a little bit of length adjustment range here in the paddle blade side. And that's because the Remix paddle is designed to be used both as a sup paddle and as a kayak paddle. To do that, all you have to do is remove the handle section from the paddle and put on another Remix blade. And that allows you to adjust the length so taller paddlers will actually have a paddle that's gonna be more comfortable, as well as having the same paddle fit a smaller user. 
The Remix paddle blades do come with a drip ring for kayaking, and it does actually work. I've encountered some of these conversions with other paddles where the drip rings don't actually do anything. The shape of the blade just flings water no matter what you put here. Uh, but it does help keep you a little bit drier when you're using the Pioneer 3 as a kayak. And that brings us to the Pioneer 3's kayak performance. Now the Pioneer 3 is a hybrid model that is designed to be used both as a stand-up paddleboard and as a sit-on-top kayak. It's a very quick and easy conversion using Isle's cloud kayak seat and foot brace and using the Remix paddle. However, the Pioneer 3 does not come with this kayak conversion kit in the actual package. It is a separate add-on you'll have to get at the time of checkout. The Pioneer 3 does make for a very comfortable sit-on-top kayak and kayaking experience. The inflatable seat helps position your hips and legs for comfort and ergonomics, and the foot brace allows you to actually press against the board with your feet and use your whole body to paddle for improved efficiency. While seated on the Pioneer 3, I found it to feel extremely stable. I didn't notice any rolling or twitching, even when I was moving around and adjusting my position on the seat, and overall, it felt like it was very easy to control. In fact, I actually had a little bit of difficulty when it came time to purposely tilt the board to test its stability and found that I really had to move my body pretty far to get the board to rock side to side or lean up on its edge. Having two paddle blades does also change the board's speed and tracking ability, and both of those things actually do increase. You're able to paddle a little bit faster because you can get more strokes per minute without a whole lot more effort. And because you're paddling on each side of the board, it is much easier to keep it moving in a straight line. And while the speed and tracking performance improved, I did feel it was actually a little bit harder to maneuver and turn the Pioneer 3 as a kayak, and that's because you don't have quite the same amount of leverage with the paddle while you're holding it in the middle with two blades as you do holding it at the end while you're standing. The Remix paddle does do a fairly good job in use as a kayak paddle versus a SUP paddle. Uh, it's not quite as good as a dedicated kayak paddle blade, but compared to some other blade shapes out there, this rectangular blade shape actually does perform fairly well. Overall, the Pioneer 3 makes a great kayak conversion for a sit-on-top kayak experience. It's still extremely stable, and it tracks even better. The Isle Pioneer 3 is an extremely easy to use and comfortable paddleboard. It's super stable, which is great for beginner paddlers, fishing, yoga, or paddling with a passenger, and it's also very versatile. The Isle Link system opens up all sorts of opportunities to use the Pioneer 3 in different ways, and the kayak conversion is one of the best systems I've encountered in both ease of use and how it feels to paddle. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I've answered all of your questions about the Isle Pioneer 3. If I did miss something or you have other questions, please let us know in the comments below. In the video description, you can find a link to the full written review for the Pioneer 3, as well as dozens of other inflatable paddle boards at inflatableboarder.com. If you've liked this video or it's helped you at all, please like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our new video content. And if you are interested in purchasing the Isle Pioneer 3, we'd appreciate it if you'd use the link in our video description. It doesn't cost you anything else, but it does help support our YouTube channel and bring you more content. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget your PFD and happy paddling.